Denver Broncos rookie quarterback Bo Nix did more than enough in week two of the NFL preseason against the Green Bay Packers to lock up the starting job. We'll tell you why we believe that and recap the game on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, Broncos country? Welcome into another episode. Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by Sarah Bettinger, Cy expert over there, predominantly orange.com. The Broncos, they're off to a 2 0 start to the NFL preseason. And while 2 0 in the preseason doesn't mean much, player evaluation means everything we'll break all that down here on today's episode show we'll hand out our game balls for some of the broncos players that stood out in their big 27 to 2 victory a weird baseball like score on sunday there but the broncos defense locking it down standing out in a big way did we see some position battles end in week two we'll highlight that and bo nix shredding the packers in his first home start in front of a raucous crowd in Broncos country, doing enough, in our opinion, to solidify himself as QB1. Sarah, that is the takeaway. That is the biggest story. Leave no doubt. If you don't believe me, look at how Broncos country feels about Bo Nix, his performance in week two of the NFL preseason, doing more than enough to lock up the starting job. In my opinion, I'm curious how you feel. Absolutely. Just showed a great command of the offense out there once again against the Green Bay Packers. And we understand like the Green Bay Packers didn't play their starters in this game. And, you know, I just think it's the double edged sword of the preseason, isn't it, Cody? I mean, a guy goes out there, plays well in the preseason. Well, it's just the preseason. And then if a guy doesn't go out there and play well in the preseason, oh, man, he can't even play well against the backups, you know, so. It's that double-edged sword there, but I think we saw the command from Bo Nix of the offense, spreading the ball around. Once again, just efficiency in terms of ending drives with scores, which we've seen that dating back to what he did last week against Indianapolis. Very, very effective when Bo is out there on the field. And even when you get kind of pinned back a little bit, a first and 20, digs himself and the offense out of that hole there, using the legs, using the arm, and just really looks so comfortable out there and, and has that, I hate to keep on saying aura because I know that's a, a hot button word there on social media, but he really does. He carries himself super, super well on the field. And I'm with you. QB one. There's no question about it. We just need Sean Payton to finally come out and say it. Yeah. Sean Payton, after the game, he told us he's, he kind of put a cap on it. He got tired of answering Bo Nick's questions. He said, look, I'm not going to name a starter tonight i imagine that announcement will probably come this week and i think everyone in that locker room knows Bo is the guy i can tell you this i had several conversations with some players who were like wow we have a quarterback we really have a quarterback this year there is excitement internally in the locker room and look broncos country you can be excited about this right and look obviously He's going to have to go and grow and do all these different things throughout the regular season. But you have every right to be excited. Don't let people tell you you can't be excited about Bo Nix. Now, here's the thing that excited me about Bo. And, and Sarah, to your point about the preseason, look, it's not about who you're playing. It's about how you're playing. And, and to me, that's the ultimate measure here. Let's take a look here at some of the numbers here. Bo Nix on the night, 8 for 9 passing, 80 yards one touchdown, three carries for 12 yards. You mentioned he picked up a 10-yard gain. The Broncos had a little bit of a long field after a holding call backed him up. 10 yards is on Lucas Kroll, and then Bo scrambles for 10. I think he finds Tim Patrick for 23, or was Cortland Sutton for some, you know, a big gain right after that. But he methodically moved the offense downfield, right? And we're talking about getting the snap. Once again, things that we have talked about on this show that he's done in practice, he's carried over into his first two preseason games. I think we saw a little bit more of a calming presence in the pocket for Bo, setting his feet more, but more importantly, just being decisive, knowing where he's going with the football. Five of his eight passes on the evening moved the chains for a first down. And I think when you take a look at the overall command of the offense, zero sacks against him in the preseason, seven total drives, six of those drives led to points. And I would say the one thing that maybe stands out to me about Bo Nix that I don't think we've talked about enough. And I even brought this up with some players in the locker room. They agree with me. 
but like in situations last year, and I hate to bring up Russell Wilson, but in situations last year where it's like, oh, this is probably going to be a sack. Bo is turning some of those could be sack situations into at least a two or three yard gain, sometimes even more on the run. So he's, he's turning what was a negative for the Broncos offense last year. And even though it's not necessarily great, right? One or two yard gains are better than three or four yard losses at this point. We are seeing him operate smoothly. Now, might I say, I mean, this is a good sign here from what the Broncos have needed at quarterback. And man, it, look, everybody around him, they look excited, but they also look better because of it. And I think that's too hard to ignore at this point. It is. And you're right about the sack point, Cody, because that was the number one thing. We brought this up on previous shows, but Sean Payton said it when he was asked earlier in the offseason, like, what is the maybe the number one thing you're looking to improve at the quarterback position? You just cut Russell Wilson, 85 million in dead cap over the next two years. Like, what are you looking for? Well, the number one thing he said was we don't want the quarterback taking unnecessary sacks. And he's brought that up a number of other times throughout the course of the the offseason and training camp, even just as recently as the last week or two here. So it's really important to Sean Payton. It's one of the number one things he loves about Bo Nix. He's not taking the sacks. And unfortunately, we did see that. If you watch Buffalo versus Pittsburgh, you're curious. Hey, how's Russell Wilson going to look in his preseason debut? Well, we saw a lot of three and outs. We saw him taking a number of sacks there. And uh, un unfortunately, just a lot of frustration, the same type of stuff. And fortunately for Broncos fans, we're not talking about those issues persisting now. We're not even talking about a rookie quarterback struggling to, man, he's just, he's not quick enough pulling the trigger on his throws, or he's not seeing the field really well, or he's not picking up what the defense is throwing at him very None of that stuff is happening. Bo looks like he's been in this offense for a couple of years, which I think is really what gives confidence. When he drops back, I have this un unbelievable confidence that something good's going to happen. It's like, why, why do I feel so confident that he's going to do the right thing every time he drops back with the ball? I, I don't know. You've never had that feeling before from a young quarterback like this, Cody. It's kind of a weird deal. So, I, I know that it's preseason. I get it. People want us to pump the brakes a little bit. But at the same time, like you said, Broncos country has every reason to be excited. Bo Nix is passing the eye test with flying colors. The eye test is what matters, too. And look, it's not just about, OK, hey, he flashed once like he is doing things within the structure of Sean Payton's offense that has national media people raving about it. And look, I, I trust the guys who've played quarterback, the Chase Daniels of the world, the Dan Orlovsky's. RG3 was even going out there on Twitter and social media. A lot of people are praising Bo Nix and saying, hey, this Sean has his guy, and it's a widespread belief. And, and look, Broncos country, to the point about being excited, and, and look, obviously, Bo Nix this season, when he starts, he's going to have games where he makes mistakes. That's just the nature of this game. It's going to happen to every quarterback in the NFL this year, but it's about not getting too high, not getting too low in a sense, just saying, hey, you know what? What is it that Bo's doing well? What can he improve on? We are so focused, and I think, in terms of commentary these days on social media, it's about stats. It's not necessarily about stats. Stats don't paint the full picture, but how is he playing? How is his process? Is he learning from the mistakes that he's made? And I would say last week, the biggest critique was his footwork, sometimes abandoning a clean pocket. Sarah, I mean, just watching it live and seeing in there in the press box with my binoculars looking all crazy, I was sitting there, I was like, Bo looks comfortable. And that's the number one thing that matters. And the offense was humming. It was moving. You can't ask for anything more than that. So with that said, Broncos country, I mean, that those, these are the things that we believe set Bo Nix apart in terms of the offense. We can talk about the other quarterbacks. We'll get to that at some point, not on today's episode of the show, because there's so much to get to, including some position battles, some clarity on some position battles with this team. Cornerback two seems locked up. Inside linebacker, two seams locked up, and the punter competition, did it end on Sunday? We'll tell you why we think it did here on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up 
to peak performance, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. A number of starting jobs may have been locked up for the Denver Broncos in their second preseason game of 2024 against the Green Bay Packers. We're going to break down cornerback two, inside linebacker, center, punter. Who won these jobs for the Denver Broncos? Maybe already here as the preseason is about to come to a close. We're going to break it down on today's episode, Locked On Broncos. But thank you so much, Broncos country, for making us your boys, Cody and Sayre, your first listen of the day every single day we appreciate you so much especially if you have hit subscribe already and if you haven't done so go ahead and do that and jump over to youtube do it as well and for your second listen of the day check out locked on fantasy football cody time will tell if the fantasy football experts helped me with my draft i i, I don't even remember if i drafted a broncos player now it just happened a couple days ago i can't think if i did but you know what i i we're not going to talk really about any guys that you might draft in fantasy football here in terms of starting competitions being settled other than quarterback in this game, but the cornerback two position, I think we've got to talk about that because Riley Moss was back out there again in this game, had a couple opportunities early. I still think even though the deep ball between he and Malik Heath, I think that was Malik Heath that uh, he was going up against in that rep. I, I don't think that really necessarily won or lost the competition but i think you see him out there and and we've seen the consistency from riley moss to make him that cornerback too this year yeah and and look he does a lot of things really well he's got really good press technique he's got really good motor technique he does a great job of mirroring receivers i mean even on that play there too and, and look right at the beginning of that game there was a little bit of a, a storm that rolled through there i don't know if you i don't know if it was visible on the broadcast but the flags mm -hmm. in the stadium were rattling sideways he's got like micro burst of like 45 50 mile an hour winds mm -hmm. so that sean clifford ball kind of floated a little bit and i was like oh man like but riley did a good job recovering there like riley's got really good range in terms of his speed his ability to recover especially if you know, he does get beat initially there like there was a little bit of separation you can argue and maybe a little bit of a push off but i you know riley has been getting run with the ones for the last you know week and a half at this point obviously his second consecutive start damari mathis and he started last week against the colts he started opposite of passer tan here in this game and, and look i would even say like it seems like the mar damari mathis at this point He's still in line. Like I've, I have a feeling like with how much he played going into the fourth quarter in this game, there were some things I really liked about what Damari did. Now, if the team, when you look at it from this standpoint, Sarah, and this is maybe the argument why Riley Moss has maybe won this competition, because I think both guys have had a tremendous training camp. I think they've had a really good preseason, both of them. Denver is, I think, further invested right now in their high third round pick essentially right you traded up to get riley moss he missed a good portion of last season due to an injury you want to see what he can do and certainly he's shown some things and, and look there are a lot of players that like what riley can do that doesn't mean that damari's not going to play a role for the broncos this year even if he doesn't win the job it means that hey he's going to rotate in vance joseph has already talked about you know damari being one of those guys who stepped up in his role last year of rotating in, being one of the better rotational players defensively. But then he's going to be a special teams ace for you as well. So maybe it gives you some clarity on some other positions, other guys at that position you may have to cut, especially if they can play special teams. And so I, I think that Denver right now is invested in Riley Moss, but I don't think Damari Mathis is too far behind, and Damari will be in line to play. And look, I, this was initially a three-man race with Levi Wallace, but his injury is kind of – really pushed him out of the conversation here. So Riley taking good strides here. And I want to ask you a question about this, Sarah. You're looking at the preseason, looking at training camp so far, two games in a row next to Alex Singleton, who's been the starting linebacker? And do you feel like he is the guy for the job at this point? 
Yeah, Cody Barton's been out there, and we kind of talked about this when he was initially signed. Just if you follow the money, you know, he's the second highest paid guy at the position, so kind of figured he might be the odds-on favorite, but the competition between he and Jonas Griffith seemed to be sort of ongoing at the beginning of training camp, and as we get into the preseason now, we see Barton taking the majority of the first team reps, if not all of them, and so you kind of figure that's a done deal. And Alex Singleton's got a new running mate out there, Cody Barton, who started last year for the commanders before that with the seattle seahawks and so that kind of a nice advantage for you too going into this week i mean it's not the same exact seattle seahawks but he certainly knows a lot of the personnel there to help out with maybe some of the scouting and things like that but cody barton to me you know he's got the athleticism i think that that's one thing that people love about jonas griffith is the big time size the ras the relative athletic score he's got speed explosiveness Cody Barton is no slouch in those departments either. One of the highest testing linebackers in his draft class a handful of years back. So I don't think there's anything wrong with him winning the starting job. I know Commanders fans weren't sad to see him leave or anything like that, but everybody on that team stinks. So you know what? Maybe he can have success in Denver um, like Alex Singleton has found success since leaving Philadelphia, even though that team didn't stink. You know, So I just think it's a good situation for him and and he's looked good to me I, I liked what we saw we saw him kind of attack the line of scrimmage a little bit showing off that athleticism i think he's going to do well in this defense yeah and, and look I'll, I'll i'll give a hat tip too i think jonas griffith played well in this game against the the green bay packers i thought he and justin sternod i think they really kind of solidified their top four depth in this game you're going to have singleton you're going to have barton as a starter you're going to have jonas and justin sternod as those two other guys and those two guys are going to play special teams which I think maybe kind of leads a little bit of credence here that Lavelle Bailey will probably end up on the practice squad here. Um, definitely saw a little bit of a change in his role initially from what we were, I think, expected. I think it was last week we saw him and uh, Jonas Griffith first off, and I think that was probably because Justin Sternado was still coming back from the groin injury. Sternado, I thought, had a pretty good game here, almost had a near interception. I have been very impressed with him in terms of what he's been able to do so we'll monitor that. feel like Cody Barton, I agree with you, is that linebacker too here next to Singleton. Uh, the center job seems locked up here for Luke Wattenberg. And, and look, in this game, Ben Powers didn't play, so Alex Forsyth played the guard spot where Ben normally is. Luke definitely, I think, has been the most consistent guy at that position. It wasn't necessarily the greatest game for Alex Forsyth either, unfortunately. Yeah, a couple of holding penalties, which – really unfortunate to see and, and you know that doesn't necessarily always mean you have a horrible overall game but those guys were kind of getting blown up there uh with Jarrett Stidham didn't have a ton of time Zach Wilson didn't have a ton of time and you add the penalties on top of it it just it wasn't good and, and so I think Luke Wattenberg who's been from what it sounds like Cody taking the majority of the reps since the beginning of training camp anyway feels like the former fifth round pick out of Washington gonna be finally put to the test here as a starter, which I think is exciting. Like uh, the storyline of Alex Forsyth, you know, being a former teammate of Bo Nix at Oregon and a former seventh round pick, it's a, it's a great story potentially, but there's nothing bad about the idea of a guy you drafted in the fifth round back in 2022, which I mean, frankly, has not been one of the best draft classes for the Denver Broncos in recent memory finally getting a starter out of that group. And, you know, that to me is encouraging. You get a guy and they traded up to get Luke Wattenberg. So I like that he's, you know, probably winning this job. And I think that it's good for you have more homegrown players on the offensive line now. I mean, that's that's just awesome. So you found somebody you didn't have to go sign a veteran. Sam Mustafer didn't win the job over two guys you drafted. I think it's good news for the Broncos. Yeah, and look, more good news on the way because it's probably the most important position battle on this team feels like it got solved. Punter, right? Riley Dixon, Trent Gill. Being a little facetious here, I felt like Riley Dixon, and I put a tweet out there too, I thought Riley Dixon looked good in, in the reps that he did. Trent Gill, I think, had a couple of punts. I was like, eh, I'm not sure about that. But then in the last 30 seconds of the game, he absolutely booms a piss missile of a punt. And it's like, okay, maybe this goes on just another week. And it doesn't hurt. Honestly, it doesn't hurt to be able to do that. We'll go back and watch the tape, the All-22, and we'll see. But obviously, I think it's good right now that you're going into week three of the preseason, knowing a lot of the starters aren't going to play. And you're like, you know what? This seems locked up for the most part. And now the only thing we are waiting 
is for Sean Payton to make the official announcement about Bo Nix being the starting quarterback. I imagine that's going to come this week. When that does, breaking news episode, Locked on Broncos will drop with that information here. But Broncos country, look, we, we want to know your thoughts on the various position battles. Was there something more you wanted to see from one player at one position? Did we miss a position battle you wanted us to focus on? Let us know here on Lockdown Broncos. But one thing we are going to do, it is a victory podcast here on the show. So you know what that means? We are going to hand out our game balls for the game. We're going to give one to one player who's battled his way back from turmoil from two years of heartbreaking season-ending injuries that could have been potentially career-ending. Tim Patrick on his comeback journey. We'll break it down here on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's episode, Locked on Broncos, is brought to you by FanDuel. And you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have a little something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. This is a huge, huge deal, fans out there. So go to FanDuel. Check out some of the odds. I'm looking at the Denver Broncos page right now. Minus 1,500 to miss the playoffs. Plus 600 as the team to score the least regular season points. I mean, there's some stuff out there that you might want to check out on FanDuel. So... I mean, you might want to get on that right now. $5, bet $5, get a three-week free trial NFL Sunday ticket. Then with a YouTube TV-based plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. Tim Patrick is back in action after two years of back-to-back -back season ending injuries. Patrick has found himself in a position to be a great comeback story here, not just for the Broncos, but potentially for the NFL this season. And certainly he got his shine in Sunday's week two of the NFL preseason Broncos 27 to two victory over the green Bay Packers real quick. I want to say thanks once again, to all the everydayers who make us your first listen you can get the show for free on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. So make sure you subscribe or follow if you haven't done so already. Sir, let's go over game balls here. I think, obviously, Bo Nix played really well. This goes without saying. We won't mention him in terms of this game ball category, but Bo Nix gave, essentially, a game ball to one player who's had just a journey throughout, not only just college, but in the NFL. I mean, an undrafted rookie for agent in college, he suffered a tib fib, broken leg. I mean, a very freak injury. And then in the NFL, Tim Patrick worked his way from undrafted to one of the most reliable role players the Broncos had on offense. And then he became a little bit, hey, this guy might be one of your better young players, one of your better stars. Now he's emerged into the veteran guy two years in a row, an ACL injury, an Achilles injury. And now Tim Patrick is back, four catches, 30 yards, one touchdown, and a very, very big mile-high salute from Tim Patrick to the crowd there at Empower Field a mile high. It was glorious to see, like one of your favorite characters from a show who may have left the show earlier, you know, like Michael Scott coming back late in the office. It was great to see Tim Patrick doing a mile-high salute there in the end zone, and you absolutely love it, especially with the rumors this past week that he could potentially be on the roster bubble, which I think, you know, that bubble's kind of floated away into the abyss here at this point because Tim Patrick means a lot to the locker room. You heard Jarrett Stidham talk after the game about, man, they just, the guys were in the locker room just celebrating the heck out of Tim Patrick. And, and what an awesome dude he, he is. Like, he's the guy that was running down the sidelines every touchdown the Broncos scored last year. Everybody's like, who the heck is that? That's just like, you know, running down the sidelines, wearing a hoodie over there on the Tim Patrick celebrating, being with his teammates, being there on the sideline, not sitting up in the press box like some other guys, you know, that uh, for other teams there, uh, Deshaun Watson. But no, I, I think Tim Patrick is the embodiment of a great teammate, and, and he's exactly the type of story that you love to see in the NFL. I, I think it's so cool. He went undrafted after the injuries in college, gets to the big money contract in the NFL, and then hasn't played a snap frankly for the Broncos on that big money contract. I know he signed it kind of near the end of that 2021 season, but 
since it kicked in, hasn't been able to play. You love to see Tim Patrick back in the mix, and I think hopefully a big part of the offense in 2024. I have a very strong feeling. Just seeing Bo Nix's connection with him in this game, I mean, you saw early, you saw often. Tim, his size, Sean is going to value that. And look, Sean has mentioned so much he values the size of this receiver room here. And look, there's going to be some interesting roster cuts that are going to happen with this team. There are going to be some good players that might end up on some other teams. Hopefully you can get some guys back on the practice squad. Tim Patrick is not one of those guys. In my opinion, I think Tim locked up his roster spot. He proved it to himself, though, too. That was the big hurdle, right? Week one of the preseason. Okay, hey, get through the first two days. Can you get to day three? Can you get to day four? Can you get to the next day? Just stacking days, and Tim has gotten more comfortable. He's gotten more confident, and he hasn't really appeared limited, and I think that's a good sign, and this game obviously I think solidified that. If To me, I, I can't remember who I was talking to in the press box, but one thing we mentioned is like, having a guy like Tim Patrick might be a great security blanket for a young quarterback like Bo Nix and having guys like Corlin Sutton, like you have talent. There's a lot of excitement about the youth that this team has, but really there's also excitement about, Hey, Tim Patrick, Corlin Sutton, they're the vets of that room. And there's a lot of respect that the players have. And they regard that those guys very, very highly. I mixed that up there. They're very highly regarded. There we go. I got it right. Sorry, folks. It's late here as we're recording the post game podcast. But just overall excitement, too, just for Tim, like the whole locker room, a huge, huge moment here for him and his comeback. And, and look, I imagine he's had moments where he's questioned whether or not he's ever going to play again. See him go out there and catch a touchdown. You love that. You admire that. You can't wait to see more of that here going forward. He gets a game ball. Now, I'm going to hand out another game ball here. Hey, we're going to give one to Kedron Smith, defensive back, safety role, two weeks in a row. Two interceptions, and obviously one, he intercepted a pass, did a great job reading, breaking on the football, returned to 56 yards to give the Broncos you know, a position right before halftime to score yet again. And look, they were going to receive the ball to open up the second half. So you, you want to maximize those opportunities. Kedron Smith has made the most of every opportunity he's gotten. And in my opinion, Sarah, don't want this to come across as a hot take. He might put JL Skinner a little bit on the back burner here a little bit with the plays that he has made, not saying that JL Skinner is going to get cut, but when we talk about the depth chart, if Denver keeps, let's say five safeties, all of a sudden JL Skinner might be that last guy on the depth chart here at that position. He very well could be. Uh, a lot of these safeties have impressed from what it sounds like throughout the course of the off season. And now we're getting to see that unfold a little bit here in the preseason. And, you know, if it's not Devin key, it's Kedron Smith making plays out there. And so we'll be interested to see, does he get a start here in the final preseason game? I don't know how many of the actual starters are going to play any snaps in this game, but I mean, we might see him out there. And if we do, maybe there's a chance that he, you play the full game, play the entire game, show us what you got, and, and we'll see what happens. But he not only made plays defensively, I saw him out there making plays on special teams as well. Because when a guy makes a play defensively, then you start to look and see, all right, if this guy can contribute to your special teams, he's probably got a really good shot of making your active roster. And not just your 53 man, but potentially playing against the Seahawks here upcoming. So I'm fascinated by that as it continues to develop. And, and you love the ball skills. You love after the catch, making a play. Uh, the Broncos, too, Cody, defensively, that defensive line depth and looking real good. And those guys getting out there, I saw Jordan Jackson making blocks out there for him. So really good stuff on the interception return as well. But I think we have to mention another guy on the defensive front when it comes to game balls in the – this preseason has really highlighted what a value I think Jonah Ellis was as a third round pick for the Denver Broncos kind of uh, felt a little underwhelming in the moment just because you're like, well, what are the Broncos doing off the edge? Don't they like Nick Benito, and Baron Browning and Jonathan Cooper and those guys got to take the good pass rushers when they fall right into your laps. And we heard Sean Payton talk about that. They passed on Troy Franklin in round three because Jonah Ellis was sitting there available he looks good, man. He looks like he's going to be a dude for this team. No, 100%. And it goes to show, I think, that their top four pass rushers are solidified. I thought Nick Benito, who's still getting more comfortable, I had a chance to talk with him after the game. His back stuff, he, he, he's overcoming it. He's working through it. You know, it's still a work in progress, but he's feeling much better. We saw him play. I thought Nick Benito played well. 
Jonah Ellis. I mean, when you watch him, not only is he good against the run, but this is a guy who's finding ways to create pressures. Then he had a strip sack, and he recovered his own strip sack that gave the Broncos the ball. I mean, Sarah, not to be cliche, but it's like it sounds like we're repeating this. His high motor stands out. I mean, it's just there. there's a reason he plays with the chip on his shoulder, the motor that he does, and he's still developing. I saw something earlier this week where his father said, just wait till he gets his shoulder back to 100% in terms of his strength. If that's the case, I'm really excited about it. But he did exactly what I think you and I kind of projected a little bit. Even if he's not starting, he has the opportunity when the pocket and how the Broncos defensive line plans to attack quarterbacks, when it starts to collapse, he can be the cleanup guy. He certainly was that, and he was damn impressive in Sunday's win against the Green Bay Packers. And look, I'm excited to see him. I don't think he plays in week three of the preseason. I think you're going to see guys like Darrell and Chami, Thomas Incoom. You're just going to see a lot of those guys play a lot, I think, against the Arizona Cardinals here in week three. But Broncos country, those are our game balls that we are handing out there. Uh, just a, a lot of good performances from a lot of Denver's young players. And, and look, to be honest with you, looking at the Packers side, the only guy who stood out to them was Malik Heath, the wide receiver. I thought he was the only guy that stood out for them. That was not a very good football performance. I know Peter Bukowski locked on Packers. Probably if you're a Packers fan watching this, go check out Peter and his rant on it. I mean, it wasn't pretty football. I know that they have concerns about the backup quarterback in Green Bay. Maybe Jarrett Stidham might be a guy for Green Bay if that you know if things change here in Denver. But with that said, Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. The Broncos improved to 2-0 and in the preseason, but more importantly, Bo Nick showcasing in back-to-back -back weeks that he can operate Sean Payton's offense effectively to the point we believe he should be named the starter. We'll see if that announcement comes this week. Now, in the meantime, when that when that does happen, you will get a breaking news episode of Lockdown Broncos when that news hits the wire that Sean Payton has officially announced it. But here's what you can expect. If you're an everyday listener of the show, tomorrow's episode of the show, we're going to do our stock up, stock down, players whose stock rose, players whose stock fell a little bit after week two of the NFL preseason. You'll get that and much more in tomorrow's brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos. We'll see you then.